them, unquote. No action whatsoever was taken against the DC. And you can see the Ghana web publication on that matter. MPP executives accused Ellen Bele DC of engage in illegal mining, not NDC executives, MPP executives. This is the same DC, ladies and gentlemen, who as recent as September 2022 was arrested for obstructing the police in the retrieval of missing excavators that had been seized from Galamsey sites in the area. Under the watch of Kwesi Bonzo, Galamsey now has become a thriving free-for-all enterprise in the Lembele. Illegal miners have moved their equipment to the main township. They've moved their mining equipment from the forest to the main township and are actively doing Galamse behind the official residence of the DC and on the land of the Nkrofu Senior High School. Aside this, ladies and gentlemen, is the matter of the DC for Bosome Frehon in the Ashanti region, Honorable Yao Danso, who was clearly caught on tape directing party people on how they should use Chinese to front the Agalamse activities. Because of time, I may not be able to play the tape to you, but I'm sure you have all seen the tape. As far back as Monday, 1st February 2021, some party executives of the New Patriotic Party and residents of Bosome Frehon accused their district chief executive, Yao Danso, for engaging in Galamse activities. In fact, some residents described him as the king pink, and here I'm quoting them, the king pink of Galamse in the area, who is fronting for Chinese nationals in illegal mining, and called President Kufuado, called on President Kufuado to relieve him of his post as district chief executive. Indeed, the DC is clearly heard in the audio that has emerged confessing to receiving 5% of the proceeds of Galamsey from someone with translated to an amount of 15,000 every two weeks as agreed between he and the owner of the Galamsey concession in the presence of their lawyers. He was also heard in the audio giving instructions to someone to bring in Chinese miners, coaching them on how to use Chinese miners to do galamsey in exchange for cash. This strong evidence has been available to President Ekufuado, and people at the forefront of the galamsey fight, yet they have failed to crack the whip. President Ekufuado's comment on this matter during his engagement with MMDCs and some chiefs in Kumasi only yesterday, shows clearly that he hasn't repented from shielding his officials who engage in illegal mining and proves what a working contradiction he is as he continues to skirt around this very important national issue. Having admitted yesterday that he was aware of reports of the Galamse activities of his DC for Bosome Freho, Yao Danso. President Ekufuado's claim that his errant, his errant DC has lost his mother and will be invited to Accra for questioning at a latter day after he buries his mom clearly betrays the president's lack of genuine commitments to punish his own appointees who are behind the illicit business. The Ghanaian people are simply tired of, presence, of the presence cocktail of empty and useless rhetorics on this subject of Galamse. We are saying to him today that it is either he begins to see, we begin to see action on his part or he should simply spare us his empty talk. Number four, ladies and gentlemen, we talk about the compromise, Operation Vanguard, Operation Galam Stop, and Operation Halt campaigns of this government, which have all turned out to be fiascos. At the heart of President Akufuado fight against illegal mining, ladies and gentlemen, has been a huge expenditure on various military and sometimes joint security operations, from Operation Vanguard to Operation Galam Stop to Operation Hot 
Several millions of Ghana cities have been expended on procuring logistics, the feeding of security personnel, and the so-called reclamation of lands in the name of fighting illegal mining. Despite the huge public funds that have been committed to the fight over the years, government has turned a blind eye on various reports of bribe taking and extortion by security personnel embedded in these tax forces. Instead of combating illegal mining, security personnel, some security personnel, let me put it that way, have been caught on camera time and again, guarding Galamse sites and protecting illegal Chinese miners in areas such as Tontukrum and Bepotentin in the Amansia areas of the Ashanti region. And uh, there is um, a story that was done by Erasmus Asaridonko of Multimedia on this, where they went to one site um, being operated by Heritage Imperia and they saw military men and their uniforms there protecting the illegal miners. And actually, the military men came to the king's journey to this part of Manso and this forest saw scenes no, because of, of time, Because of time, we will not be able to play Abandoned the video. Abandoned pits and but mining settlements. You, I'm sure road, some of you have already seen into the remaining. So if you can mute the sound and just allow the video to roll on the screen, uh, I think that would be great. Ladies and gentlemen, these pieces of evidence have been available to the president and the powers that be, yet no action was taken to raid the tax force of such criminally minded officers. No wonder the fight has been a futile one, and the various tax forces have been a complete waste of the public purse. The former Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable John Peter Amiwu, under whose leadership the fight against Galam States began, made an observation that members of the Operation Vanguard team had been compromised by illegal miners. This statement was corroborated by the then Eastern Regional Minister, Honorable Eric Daffo. And you can show those publications on the screen so that those who are not aware can appreciate what we are talking about. Here, Peter Mewu is reported to have said by Modern Ghana on the 19th of December 2017 that one step forward, two steps back. I'm not saying it. This is John Peter Mewu. He says, um, can, I, can, can you scroll? Let's read the relevant portions. This is a very important story. He says, but unfortunately, even some members of the government itself are giving to making unsupported allegations about corruption within the tax force, which can only gladden the hearts of the anti-tax force propagandists. For instance, the Eastern Regional Minister and Chairman of the Regional Security Council, Rexec, Mr. Eric Kwachedafo, was reported by CTFM on 14 December 2017 to have revealed that some youth in mining communities are enticing members of the anti galamsey tax force, Operation Vanguard, who are on assignment in the region. Aside these happenings in the early years of the Ekufuado Bawumia government, which have been indelibly inscribed in the womb of time, we also do recall that some chiefs in the Amansia area in the Ashanti region had no cause, had cause to accuse the then head of the Forestry Commission, the late Kojo Uswefie, aka Sir John, and other high ranking government officials of fronting illegal mining activities in the area. Also, as recent as 27th April 2022, the Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Mrikuduka, who also doubles as the MP for Takan Suayim, was accused for his involvement in a dispute between two illegal small-scale mining gangs, the Okobin Gang on one hand and the Mrikuduka side on the other hand. The leader of the gang, the leader of the group alleged to be affiliated with the MP died on the spot from a gunshot, while the leader of the Okobeng gang sustained deep cutlass wounds on the head and ears and was rushed to the Kolibu teaching hospital. The deputy minister and MP for Takwa, 
who was never sanctioned by President Ekufuado for allowing illegal mining activities in his backyard, let alone actively encouraging and associating with Sain. Today, openly talks about the need to fight Galangse. If you go to his own hometown, Pataho, in Dumping, I'm talking about the hometown of the Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Mirikiduka, who doubles as a chief in the area. His hometown has now become a hotbed for Galamse activities. And you can go there with your cameras to check for yourself. His own hometown. Friends from the media, all the cases we have aligned point to an indisputable fact that the so-called fight against illegal mining under President Kufuado has long been a wobbly, compromised one that is bound to fail. President Kufuado has taken no interest in investigating these reports and bringing the named corporates to book. The only reasonable explanation for this strange reluctance of President Ekufuado to act on these glaring cases of governmental and official complicity in Galamse is because is that President Ekufuado is himself complicit and benefits from the illicit Galamse trade of his appointees. We all recall, or if you don't recall, I want to remind you how under the leadership of Professor Frimpon Boatin as Environment Minister, about $3 million of taxpayers' money was spent on the procurement of drones to be used by the various tax force to fight Galamse. Can President Ekufuado tell the nation the whereabouts of these drones and what use they have been put to? Now, number five, last but one, we'll talk about the most famous and the biggest Galamse campaign in the MPP, Chama Wuntumi, and the activities of his Akonta Mining Limited in the Tano Nimri Forest Reserve. Distinguished friends from the media, we are pretty sure that you have followed recent events pertaining to the illegal mining activities of a company belonging to Bernard and Chibu Siakon, a.k.a. Chama Wuntumi, who is the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the ruling New Patriotic Party. The said company, known as Akonta Mining Limited, is reported to have been engaging in extensive illegal mining activities in the Tano Nimri Forest Reserve, located in Samre Boy, in the Western region, without any mining lease, mineral rights, and or permits to undertake any mining operations in the Tano Nimri Forest Reserve. This fact has been confirmed by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources and the Minerals Commission. Yet, Chama Wuntumi is still working free. As earlier revealed, Chama Wuntumi is one of the biggest and leading Galamse campings in this Ekufuado Bawumia government, whose Galamse footprints have left vast devastation in various forest reserves in the Ashanti, Eastern, Western, and Western North regions of this country. Embodied by the nonchalance and lukewarm posturing of President Akufuado, MPP bandits and thugs who now work for Chama Wuntumi's mining companies had the effrontery to engage in an open armed combat with the anti Galamse tax force of the Ochehne at Asamai Town for in the eastern region only two weeks ago. And maybe you have seen it. Some may not have seen it. So as for this one, let's play the video so that those who have not seen it can watch it because it is quite recent. I'm talking about those who are watching. The video of tax and bandits belonging to Chamaun to me engaging in an armed combat. Hey, 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 hey. These are 
bandits we are talking about. Fast, fast, fast. Who's running? Get away! What's that Hey, what's in? What's in? It's okay. These things make you sad when you watch it. it makes you. It, 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 it is. Can you meet the sound? It is very painful to be a Ghanaian at this time, because this is how low our country has sunk. Are we at war? What crime have we committed? What wrong have we done, President Ekufuado, and these people? That in the name of Galamse, they can engage in such armed combat in a community without even caring about the children, the women, the old men, the young people in the community and the unintended consequences of the guns they were firing on these people. They didn't care because for them, party is This is how brazen wound to me has become in this indiscriminate Galamse activities and destruction of the environment under the watch of President Kufuad and Vice President Alaji Bawumi. And let me say, we've read in the media that wound to me has said somewhere, uh, I stand to be corrected, and we've read in the media that he says somewhere that if he's arrested, he will come and campaign for the NDC. Mr. Wound to me, we don't need you. And we will not accept you. Because the NDC is not a safe haven for thieves and people who destroy water bodies, our lands and our forest reserve. We don't need people like you to campaign for us. As a leading figure within the MPP, we can understand why President Kufuadu has refused to crack the whip on wound to miss destruction of the environment. Because this conduct ties perfectly into the grand agenda of party, Yeska, which aims at mobilizing money for the new patriotic party through illegal mining activities. Now, lastly, we will talk about the famous one. Um, it will be a sacrilege if we end this press conference without touching on it. Here yeah, I'm talking about the Aisha Hawaii debacle, or should I say, what is the new name? What? The new name? Aisha something. Is it? N. And why? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, the final nail in the coffin of the Kufuado, of a Kufuado's failed Galamse fight, must certainly be the ignominious Aisha Wine debacle. The Aisha Wine debacle, as putrefying as it is, undoubtedly sums up a Kufuado, a Kufuado's fight against Galamse which has been one of hypocrisy, double standards, and complicity. We are sure that you are all aware of how the Chinese woman, Aisha Wan, who was arrested in May 2017 and charged for undertaking illegal mining in Ghana and allegedly deported from the country in December 2018, miraculously re-emerged in Ghana. Aisha Wan, who gained extreme notoriety for her Galamse activities, was tagged as the Galamse queen, who was tagged as the Galamse queen, is said to have been in Ghana all this while, in fact, since 2018, and was back to her illicit Galamse business until she was recently arrested after one of her partners reported her to the police. Indeed, many, including us in the NDC, casted doubt over whether or not Aisha was deported from the country in the first place when she was first arrested in 2017. As fate will have it, the chickens have come home to roost. When in a recent interview with Stone City FM in the Vota region on Monday, 12 September 2022, truth mistakenly fell out of President Kufuado's mouth. In response to a question on the rearrest of Aisha Huan, the President said, quote, I am not sure whether she was in fact deported or whether she fled the country the first time and has now come back, unquote. If you doubt me, 
watch this video. Can we see that video? Okay, we will show that video later. Much as the above statement from President Kufuado was tragic, it revealed the inner truths and naked underbelly of the so-called fight against Galamse, which has been nothing but lip service, half-hearted half -hearted efforts, and complicity. Having been arraigned before courts once again and charged, it remains to be seen whether the Kufuado Bawumia government will finally clothe itself in some glory by prosecuting the notorious Aisha Wan to serve as a deterrent to others. But judging from events in times past, we are not in the least hopeful for any positive outcome. Only time will tell. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen of the media, as we have amply demonstrated, the so-called fight against Galamse by the Kufuado Bawumia MPP government is a scam and has been a lost battle from day one. This is because there has never been any genuine commitment or political will on the part of President Ekufuado to combat the Galamse menace. History has shown that any time a leader sets out to fight a certain crime in society, be it illegal mining, corruption, drug trafficking, or any other vice, there is bound to be resistance from dark forces, including those who benefit directly from those crimes. However, what distinguishes leaders who succeed from those who fail is a genuine political will, not only to bring sunshine on those crimes, but to severely punish the corporates in order to serve as a deterrent to like-minded persons who may contemplate those crimes. President Kufuado has proven to be a leader who has specialized in talk without backing same with these. Today, our beloved country stands at a crossroad of unprecedented economic mess and unprecedented environmental degradation under the watch of President Kufuado and Al-Haji Baumia. Instead of accepting responsibility for his failed Galamse fight, President Kufuado, aided by the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel Abujinapo, have resorted to shifting the blame to the chief Tensi institution. This latest attempt by the Kufuado government to blame the failed Galamse fight on the chiefs of this country and community leaders is shameful to say the least and must be condemned in no uncertain terms. It is about time President Kufuado understood the important duties of the high office he occupies. He is the President of the Republic and the Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. As President, he has authority and control over the security services and the coercive powers of state. The mineral resources of this country are vested in him in trust for the people of Ghana. And therefore he, and only he, has the ultimate responsibility to ensure compliance with the mineral and mining laws of the country and the prosecution of those who breach sin. More importantly, only he has the power to hire and fire appointees of his who engage in the legal mining. No attempt, and I repeat, no attempt to shift or share blame for his failed Galamse fight will wash. He was the one who placed his presidency on the line, and he will be held responsible for the failed fight. Mr. President, Nana Adodankwa William Akufuado. Leaders are elected to solve problems, but you have only come to create more problems for the country, only to turn around to massage the problems with flowery speeches and empty promises. Ghanaians are tired of your flowery speeches and useless rhetorics. Your so-called fight against Galamse has been a spectacular failure, and the only way to salvage it is for you to man up and finally begin to crack the whip on your errant appointees and MPP functionaries who are neck deep in the Galamse business. A business that is killing all of us. Because water is life. 
And it is said that when the last tree dies, the last man dies. So when you destroy water bodies and you destroy forest reserves with reckless abandon and brazen impunity like we are witnessing currently, you are more than a murderer. Mr. President, we demand the following urgent and concrete actions from you if you want Ghanaians to take you seriously. Number one, we demand the immediate prosecution of all government functionaries and MPP officials who have engaged in illegal mining, such as Charles Bissu, Chama Wuntumi, the evidence is clear, the Minerals Commission, your own Minister for Lands and Natural Resources say Chama Wuntumi is doing galamse in the town of Nimri Forest Reserve. You don't need any other evidence before you can prosecute him. And Yowusu, Ekuwa Wusi, Professor Frimpon Boateng, among others. This will be the first step to your redemption and serve as a deterrent to other people within your government and party. You need to send a clear signal to Ghanaians that anyone caught in Galamse will be dealt with without fear or favor, regardless of their party colors. Number two, Mr. President, we demand that all the so-called illegal mining companies, like the Akonta Mining Company, which belongs to Chama Wuntumi, the Heritage Imperial Mining Company, which belongs to Mr. Donald Ensia, a known financier of the MPP, who have invaded forest reserves without any mining leases or permits, must be closed down and prosecuted. The assets of these companies must be confiscated, and their owners surcharged with cost, with the cost of the destruction they have caused our environment. We demand that all security personnel, number three, complicit in illegal mining activities should be made to face internal investigations and discharged from the various services to serve as a deterrent to others. Mr. President, until you undertake the above actions faithfully, your so-called renewed fight against Galamse will remain a mirage and a mere talk shop. You will be remembered by posterity as a president who promoted illegal mining by his appointees, party functionaries, and their foreign collaborators, and supervised the worst destruction of our environment. Before I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, and for the avoidance of doubt, let me make the point that the NDC is not against mining in principle. What we are against is illegal mining particularly mining in water bodies and irresponsible mining that destroys the environment without any reclamation. What we are vehemently against is hypocrisy of government officials who, after destroying the businesses of legal small-scale miners, have turned around to engage in the menace with brazen impunity. Thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. And may God bless our homeland Ghana. Well, ladies and gentlemen, because of time, I will just do a brief summary of this presentation in the Chi language.